good morning. <clears throat> oh, obviously the first time I've spoken today. Hello, how are you all? Happy Saturday. Another weekend. I hope you're all having a good week so far. I um, haven't seen you since Tuesday, uh, but I can see you've all been super busy seeing some lovely posts in the group and on the videos. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do a floating necklace today. When I was last with you on Tuesday, we were making the crocheted piece. Um, and for a lot of you, working for wire just isn't your thing. So I thought I would do an alternative one where you can kind of still get the same effect, working with very different materials. Um, I know a lot of you liked the end result, but were a bit scared about using wire and crocheting. Some of you don't crochet. Well, actually I don't, but it's the one stitch that you need. Um, and so I'm going to show you how to use monofilament. It's something that doesn't really get used very much. Um, and it's a fantastic one to work with, super easy. Um, and I'm also going to show you my little trick for multi-layering necklaces as well. Um, so before we get started, I'll say hello and good morning to you all. Good morning, Alicia. Hi, Ruth, Camille, Alison, Debbie. You can see there's lots of you here already. Lorna's saying good morning to everyone. Hope everyone's doing okay. Hi, Angela, Debbie, Maxine, Joe. Wonderful video. Uh, was it yesterday? Uh... What day are we now? Saturday. Joe. anyway, when you did your hearts, it was fabulous. I hope um, you're all enjoying meeting different members of our community as well and all their different makes, which are so lovely. Um, hi, Sarah. Hi, Sue. So let me know if you're watching for the first time as well. Don't be shy. Um, just give us a little wave. Give us a little hello. Let us know where you are as well. We tend to have international viewers on these videos, which are fabulous. Um, now, I've got a few bits and pieces to show you before we get started. So I'll pop you over onto the website like we normally do. Uh, so that we can have a little look and then we will get started. Okay, so over on the website, just as usual, uh, totallybeads.co.uk, categories, down to Facebook tutorials. And this will actually give you, oh yes, it was yesterday, look, the rainbow hearts. Uh, this will give you absolutely everything that you need for all of the videos that we do, um, all the way back until March last year, nearly a year we've been doing these Facebook Lives, the time has flown by. Um, and so you can get all of the bits and pieces in here. That's the rainbow crochet one I was just talking to you about, the beaded orchid sat behind me that we were doing the other day. And then today's floating jewelry. So I'm actually using beads that we had in a wire necklace the other day so that you can use your leftovers in lots of different ways. So I'll show you those as well. You're going to need an easy eye needle, some collots, some jump rings and a clasp. I'm making a necklace so that makes sense. And then monofilament. So I'm going to use the 0.25 millimetre. So super fine and thin, but we do also have a 0.5 millimetre as well. Um, for those of you who are new, we've also got the jewellery plier set that I'm going to be using. I've also got my Easy Eye Needle from in there and I'll take you through that in a moment. And then these are my little wonders, the little double clasps. I'm going to show you how you can use all of these to create multi-layered effects. And then these are the beads that I'm going to use today uh, from the Wire Wrap Jewellery set in gold. And actually I can see we've got the rose gold back in stock. So that's exciting. And I actually think I have that here with me as well. So I could show you that too. Um, I was quite happy to use the beads that I had now anyway, because they are my colors. Uh, so I'm gonna turn you down and show you through everything. And then we will get going. Okay, so these are the gold beads. Now you get so many. Hi, Irene, watching from Australia. Good morning. Well, I don't know what time it is there for you, but morning here. Hi, Margaret from Cardiff. Lovely, I can see we've got some newbies as well. Um, so yeah, do, do say hello. Um, we're a friendly bunch. <laughs> okay, so these are the gold beads. You get so many. I've broken them down into colour families because I'm going to make three necklaces out of the one set. So I've broken them down into the softer natural colours. And then that left me with four strands of my faceted rondelle crystals and then my semi-precious chips as well. So I'll put all of these together to make a necklace. And remember, this is all from the one set. Then I broke it down into the darker colors as well. So now you can be making multiple pieces for all different outfits and seasons. So I had a strand of the tiger eye and a strand of my fasted crystals. They'll go together nicely as well. And then that left me with the greens. I could put one of these in with it, which would look really nice. 
In fact, let's do that today. I'll add in one of the crystals as well. So these are the ones that I'm going to use. And I've got a double layered necklace as well as probably enough to do a smaller section or a matching bracelet out of one strand of my semi-precious beads. So these go really far. And remember, we've got these golds, but we've also got the rose gold in stock as well. So monofilament. Um, this is the 0.25 that I'm going to be using. Comes on a smaller spool. The 0.5 comes on a slightly larger one. Um, although there's only 0.25 mil <laughs> in the thickness, it's very, very different to work with. I'm not sure if you can see just how fine the 0.25 is, and that's the 0.5. Um, I prefer working with the 0.25. It's just got the fluidity of thread. You can even weave with monofilament as well. Not many people like to use it because it coils up, so I'm going to show you a few tricks for those as well. And it's super strong. It is stronger than thread. It does have ever such a slight give to it. So just as we were loading the video there, you could see me pulling it and just stretching it out slightly. And that's because when you take it off the spool, because it's wound so tightly, can you see that you get that coil? So all I do is take some of it out, stretch it out a little bit, and you can see already it's got rid of the majority of that spring. What you can also do is if you take a bowl of warm water, hopefully you can see all of this, the, um, the hard thing with using monofilament is that it's made to be invisible. <laughs> so teaching and doing videos with it is a little bit tricky. But you can see that straight away I'm straightening that up really easily. If you take a bowl of warm water, cut your strand off, and you can actually dip it into warm water. Some people even use the steam from the kettle, but obviously be careful. Um, and you can also get rid of those coils and turns within it as well. Now I'm gonna use my Easy Eye Needle. Now this is the one that actually comes in my plier set. Oh, she says as she drops them. Um, in my plier set, um, but you can also buy the needles individually. So the plier set actually comes with your round nose, your cutters and your flats. It also comes with the bead scoop scissors and my ruler that has the bead sizer in it as well, which is really handy, all the way down from two mil up to 12. Um, and I get asked about this a lot. This is where I got it from. And then in here is your needle tube. So you'll get uh, three Easy Eye needles in there and that's the one that I'm using today. And an Easy Eye needle, the whole body of the needle completely opens up. So it makes working with a monofilament with some of your threads super easy. As you can see, it is a long needle as well, but you just open up the body of it, take that needle, pop it straight through, and that's me ready to go. So it's a nice one to work with um, things like monofilament, whereby trying to get that through a needle is gonna be really tricky. The other way, if you are using a smaller eyed needle to get your monofilament through, is just take your flat nose pliers and ever so slightly squeeze the end of it. And what that will do is actually flatten it out, making it really easy to go through a needle. Oh, Lorna says she does this with normal threads too. Stretching it helps stop tangling. Yeah, exactly. And the way we're gonna be threading on here, um, I don't want it to coil up very much. Okay, so I'm gonna take some of my beads off of my strand. Let me just cut through this wire and I'm going to add on some of my crystals to go with my multi-layered necklace. So this is actually going to give me quite a similar effect to the crocheting that we did on Tuesday, uh, but it's a lot easier to achieve. So um, for some of you who just couldn't really handle the thought of crocheting with thin wire, we're going to do this with monofilament, so it'll be super easy. So I'm gonna take my crystal and I'm gonna pull it about an arm span, so I've got my arm completely stretched out down my monofilament, and then I'm gonna take my needle and go back through it again and pull all of that through. And you'll see that what you do is create a little loop, just like we would if it was a stopper bead at the end of um, you know, your, your seed bead work. We're gonna pop that in and tighten that up. Now this bead is then floating completely on my monofilament because the monofilament is pretty much invisible. It completely holds it really nicely and neatly. 
and we start to get a really nice floating necklace effect and especially with faceted beads um, crystals and our semi-precious this is such a nice way of showcasing the beads because they really get to move and you can see the entire bead on its own so I'm going to pop a few more on so I just keep on moving them down nice and close to each other once they've reached each other I'll just leave a little gap enough for me to pop my needle through to the other side and up oh, caught my ring. And if you find that there's too much of a gap in between any of them, you can actually just move them all the way along so that you can tighten them up, you can loosen them up, you can situate them wherever you want them to be. So I'm gonna do a few more of these and then we're gonna to start to create a lovely floating necklace. Now I've already done two of my strands of my semi-precious beads and I'm going to show you how to make a multi-layered necklace really, really simply. So you can take individual necklaces and start layering them up together with one of our little clasps and it will actually completely stop it from detangling. So you can see the Easy Eye Needle makes it super, super simple. Um, you wouldn't actually even need to use a needle with your monofilament. You could get away with just threading it straight through by hand. And you can see as I stretch this out and just tighten it up a little bit, it's gonna move some of the beads, but we can reposition them and move them at any point. And you can see how it's actually really similar to our crocheted necklace, but a lot easier. It takes a little bit longer to prep and to actually make than the crochet. Uh, tried doing a floating with crimp beads and broke the, the monofilament. Ah, yeah. If you're going to do, um, if you're going to use uh, crimp beads to do a floating necklace, and I'll show you that in a moment, I would use tiger tail uh, because the monofilament is um, just like a plastic cord, like a jelly cord. So if you have any sharper edges or like we did on the end, we're squeezing the end of the monofilament, you're going to end up damaging it. And unfortunately... Ruth, you learned that one the hard way, didn't you? I would use tiger tail. And you can actually get tiger tail in lots of different colours as well. I'll show you the difference between the two in a moment. Um, but this is one way that you can do a floating necklace. And it's really lovely. It's quite relaxing. It's just like hand sewing. So it's quite nice and repetitive. So you get into a really lovely swing. So if there's any that are completely out of the way, just slide those down. We'll neaten that up ever so slightly. Like so. And if you want to, you can work with a smaller arm span because we could also then decant my, um, we could cut my uh, thread, my monofilament from the spool and you can work the other way as well. So you could um, effectively be starting in the middle. So you wouldn't have to do it all the way. Okay, so that's going to give me a really lovely strand. Now, if you want to tighten it up and pull it, that's going to give you a much neater hang on the necklace, like so. So it becomes very straight and they will just sit like strung beads. Or if you don't pull it out and tighten it up, and I like to do that with um, my semi-precious beads, you get that little bit more of um, an accordion effect with it. So you can see here, that this, because they're such natural chips, they're all completely different sizes, and I haven't pulled this one too tightly. So although they are all still suspended in the monofilament, it gives you a very natural finish. And it also stretches out your beads further than just the strand, um, because of course we are putting uh, gaps in between them all. So it's gonna give you a very similar look to your crochet. Now I'm gonna move this one out of the way. Where's my other strand? There it is. So with your crochet, when we started that one, we had our strands like so. Now, because we did it on wire, when we twist them, of course, we could actually secure them and squash them together. We were tightening up all of that tension. Whereas with your monofilament, it's not gonna hold it into place as tightly as when we crocheted with the wire, but you can still get the same effect. So you can take multiple strands like these, twist them together, 
and it's going to give you a very similar effect to the crochet but with that invisible finish because you haven't got the wire. So you can see they're going to twist together and give you a lovely finish. With the crochet you could actually see the wire. So it's two very different ways of doing it, very similar end result. Excuse me, a bit croaky today. Okay, finishing off. Now, because the monofilament is completely invisible and it's very slidey, because it's your um, because it's your like jelly cord, it's going to be quite slidey. Now, if you wanted to do a floating necklace with tiger tail, I'll show you that quickly before we finish this one off. Actually, just so you know, you've got your options. Tiger tail is a nylon coated wire. So you do have the fluidity of thread, but as you can see, it's got no give in it at all, like your monofilament. Your monofilament is stretchy. But with this, you could also achieve a floating necklace. You can actually thread them on in exactly the same way. So if I come down to here, come back up through, just like we did on our monofilament, you can actually suspend them in that way as well and they will stay in place but you kind of get that um, much more prominent loop at the bottom you can see it really clearly it's still going to give you a lovely effect and as you can see that bead isn't going to go anywhere you can slide it but not as easily as the monofilament or you can use some crimp beads and this is what Ruth was saying <coughs> you can use crimp beads to float those beads so add a crimp Add your feature bead and add another crimp. Slide them down into the place and the position that you need them to be. And then you're going to take your flat nose pliers and we're just going to crush that crimp. So I like to make sure, so I hold it loosely in my pliers so that I've got that move. And then as I'm squashing it, I'm just making sure that the crimp bead is lined up with the tiger tail completely in the middle. If you go slightly off centre, and this is just my OCD kicking in, if you go slightly off centre, it gives you a more prominent look. So if I move my bead down now, I can move that second crimp bead directly on top of it. And again, I'm going to hold that crimp bead in my flat nose pliers loosely, so I'm holding the bead, I can position it, squashing it right up close to the bead itself and then making sure that the wire is in the middle. I'm just gonna crush that flat. So that's another way that you can do it so that you get that lovely floating bead. But I would do, um, if you're gonna use your crimp beads, I would do it on your tiger tail, not your monofilament. So you can see <clears throat> there's lots of ways you can get the effect. And um, if you're doing floating necklaces, I love to multi-layer them. So tiered necklaces are gonna look really lovely. And then actually what I'll do next week We'll do one with these and I'll show you how to position it so that when you then multi-layer them, you get those lovely lined up beads, just giving you that lovely professional finish with them. But we're not going to use crimp beads today. I am going to use the collots though. Let me just get rid of these. Um, flat nose pliers separately on the website, Sarah? Yes, they should be. Um, if you type in chain nose or flat nose pliers, um, I'm pretty sure that we've got quite a good tool section and that will come up for you. Okay, now the lobster claws I'm using are a little bit bigger than I would like to. You could also use um, a spring clasp as well, bolt clasp, spring loaded one, something like that. I'm going to use some of my collots and then I'm going to use a few jump rings as well. So. When you're actually making the necklace, I'm gonna make them with just the lobster claw clasps. And then we're gonna turn this little slider, multi-loop clasp, into a lovely little contraption that will mean that we can wear lots of necklaces all at once without them tangling up. Okay, so, I'm just gonna untwist these two. Now, your monofilament is, like I said before, quite slidey, slippy. So we want to make sure that we're going to secure it into our... Ah, hi Simon. He's saying only chain nose pliers separately. The flat nosed are in the five ergonomic pack. So we've got the chain nose. Now the difference between the two chain nosed are um, pointier at the ends. 
but still do a great job. So these are flat, your chain nosed will have a tapered off point up at the top, but they'll still do the same job. Okay, so I've threaded my collot on. Now the collot is the little domed contraption that's gonna hide all of our knots at the end. I've um, made sure, of course, that the clamshell, the dome, is facing upwards because it's gonna secure everything. So you come up through that center hole in the hinge, and then we're just gonna create a couple of knots. So I've got an oversized knot here, just uh, an overhand knot. And then you can either use one of your needles, you could use a head or an eye pin, you could use probably the tips of your round nose pliers, um, but they'll probably be a little bit too wide. So I'm just gonna take my needle and pop it into that circle that I've created. And what that will do is sink that knot all the way down to my hole in the clasp, like so. And this is where you need to be careful because just one knot isn't gonna be big enough this will still slide up and over that knot. So you need to do a couple of them. What you could even do is knot a little crimp bead in there as well. So by adding in a bead, it's going to give us a slightly bigger knot and it's got something to hold on to and we're not even gonna see it. So if we take, you could even do it with a seed bead. If we take one of these little crimp beads pop it down and we're not going to squash it because remember that's going to give us a weakened bit in our monofilament but what I will do is attach that bead into my knot put the needle in it's still going to give me that slide ability which will come all the way down to the bottom slide that off and it just means that that knot is going to be more secured and more um larger it's going to be bigger than the actual hole in my collot itself and then I'm going to do another knot directly on top of it and with your monofilament you need to glue it into place so once we've done all of these knots I'm just going to do it so that that crimp bead is encased in this one as well so working that thread all the way around the outside of the bead pulling it in and there I've got another one. Now you can put an, a little dollop of um, like your B6000 that we have on the website and close that off. And that's now gonna hide all of my knots, little bit of glue inside and once that glue is dried, you can trim that little section off as well. So that's giving me a really nice neat finish. I'm gonna attach on my clasp. I can't wait to make this colorway up. I think it's beautiful. A great bundle of beads as well because I can get three three full necklaces out of these. Now onto one side we're going to attach our jump ring and our clasp so twisting it open and then twisting it to close it so that we shut. On the other side we will add on just a jump ring just as we normally would with a necklace. A little crimp bead on to secure this one in. And this one, this is actually a lot shorter this side because my monofilament snapped last night because I overstretched it. So it's fine to do so that you get a nice neat finish but once you've stretched it, you're obviously lessening the amount that you can stretch it further. So you are taking it to its limit. And just bear that in mind. You want it straight enough that you don't get too many kinks, but not so straight that you're gonna weaken that actual filament itself. Just gonna open it up so I've got a bit more visibility. So I'm just securing that thread just next to the crimp bead making sure that that knot is then going to tighten up and it's going to hold all of that into place lovely and then another little bit of glue squeeze that shut and once that glue is dry you'll be able to cut off your threads okay so this side is only going to have our jump ring all the way through 
like so. And if you find that your collots are a little bit open, you can actually just use your pliers just to pinch those shut, just to get a lovely finish. Okay, so there's our really simple necklace, like so, which is very delicate, very petite. It looks lovely when it's on because you just get that floating necklace, uh, floating beads effect. And then we'll do exactly the same with this one as well, which is ever so slightly longer. So it means that when I tear them now, so I've got two individual necklaces that I can wear, or I can now make it so that I can have a multi-layered necklace and I wear it all at once. So because of this, I'm gonna take one of these slider clasps. Now the slider clasps have a magnet inside, a hollow drum on one side, and you can see that the loop, so normally these are used for um, some of your bead weaving because you can do multiple strands. It's got two connectors on either side. So I'm actually gonna attach, oh, I'm actually gonna attach another two clasps onto here. So I'm just gonna do this with a jump ring. Open up the jump ring, go through one side of the clasp and I'm gonna add on a lobster claw clasp. And then I'm going to do the same thing just below it. Now, like I said, these lobster claws are a little bit large for the one that I'm using here. Um, but it's still going to do the job. If you've got longer hair, this is going to be completely hidden anyway. Just making sure I thread him on in the same direction. Um, this will be completely hidden if you've got longer hair anyway. Um, so it doesn't have to be too pretty it's going to be functional more than anything and then you can take absolutely any of your necklaces and start multi-layering them and this is a really nice way to wear multiple necklaces all at once and without them having um, a twist in them so it's also good if you struggle to put on necklaces using lobster claw clasps because you can put all of this together before you put it on and then the only thing you need to do at the back of your head is pop those two magnetic sections in. So my clasp that would normally attach to my jump ring, I've attached onto my slider. And then on this side, you'll attach on obviously the other side of your necklace and because we've already got that clasp on there. So as you can see, you've actually got quite a few clasps at the back. It's not too unsightly because of course, all of the metals match, which is really lovely. Um, but now it means that I can wear multiple layered necklaces. And although I've only got two on here, we also do them in threes and fives, I think, as well. So if you wanted to have five necklaces all together, multi-layered, without having to construct it as one piece, you could take a necklace that maybe is your favourite that's bought from a jeweller's. You could add in some of your own ones as well and have them without twisting. So doing this is a really handy little trick. Um, and of course, now when you wear them, they aren't going to wrap around each other and twist around each other. Um, when I wear lots of my fine chains, they are a nightmare to undo uh, when you take them off. So it's a really nice little trick. Very, very simple to do. And of course, it's going to mean that you can wear a multi-layered necklace very, very easily. Um, so a slight alternate take onto our crocheted piece doing a floating necklace, couple of couple of different techniques that you can do, whether you're gonna float them in the monofilament or of course use your tiger tail and your crimp beads as well. Don't forget we've got the lovely beads as well um, that you'll be able to make so many necklaces from. It's really um, amazing value for money. Um, Pauline says, have terrible trouble with lobster clasps uh, doing them up. Yes, yeah, so and this would be a great one for you. Um, add on those extra clasps, those magnetic ones, and then it's going to be really handy. Um, just make sure that when you then wear the magnetic clasp, that the um, sliding end, I would always put that in so that it's upside down. Um, because then the magnet is going to hold it and the weight of that is going to, the weight of the necklace holding it and gravity is going to keep it on that way. If you do it the other way, um, the weight is working against the magnet. So I hope that makes sense. A uh, great idea, especially for those with dexterity problems. Exactly, Sheila. It's just, it might actually mean that you can wear necklaces that you've been putting off or haven't worn, you know, for a while because you can't do them up. Uh, so it's a really nice, uh, nice little trick. 
um, and simply using those multi-loop clasps. Um, it sounds like we have a birthday. Happy birthday, Betty. Um, I hope you have an amazing day. Thank you so much for joining me. I am going to be back on Monday and I'm going to be showing you how to make wire work chandelier earrings. Um, so we're going to be making our own component out of wire. You know I love wire. Um, and it's a nice thick wire too. So we're going to make some lovely earrings um, very, very easily. Take away some of those fears around wire. Um, I hope you all have an amazing weekend. Thank you so much. Happy Saturday. And I will see you on Monday. Take care. Bye.